The brand new MacBook Pro has been out for around about a month now and I've had mine for just over a week. I have here the cheapest MacBook Pro 14 inch that you can buy. So it has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage and the M1 Pro chip. And even though it is the base model, I can easily say it is the most powerful computer that me personally, that I have ever used. It's insane, I genuinely love it. If you haven't yet seen my first video on the MacBook Pro 14 inch, I will link it up there in the corner so you can go and check it out if you would like to. It's all about my first impressions on this laptop and talking about why I decided to go with the cheapest MacBook Pro 14 inch. In this video though, I wanted to talk about video editing and in particular, talking about is this base MacBook Pro 14 inch good enough for all of your video editing. So let's get into it. Now very quickly, just before we go any further, if you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of video, photography, and tech related videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button that's just down below there and come and be a part of this community, which is growing very, very quickly at the moment. So it's hugely exciting. So all of you fellow video editors out there, is the base MacBook Pro 14 inch good enough for all of your video editing? In a word, yes. Now in this video, I'm not gonna look at all of the benchmarks because there's, as I said in my last video, there's loads of videos out there to talk about benchmarks and specific performance related things, whether you're using Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci, you can go and find that somewhere else on YouTube. I personally, I don't really understand it if I'm honest. If, if the laptop works for me, then it's a good enough laptop for me, if that makes sense. I don't need to know all of the scores that it gets on specific benchmarks. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's just me personally. If it works for me, it does the job. So what I'm gonna do instead is talk about some of the reasons that this is the perfect video editing laptop for me, and hopefully it is for you as well. Now the first reason that this is the perfect video editing laptop is its size. Now in the past, I have owned both the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the old 16 inch MacBook Pro, both Intel versions before the M1 or M1 Pro MacBook Pro came out. I have had pros and cons with both. The 13 inch, it was perfect to travel with. You could throw it in your bag and you could carry it around easily. It didn't take up much space at all. The 16 inch, however, it was more powerful and it was a lot more capable than the 13 inch, but it was a lot more chunky to carry around. It was a bit of a squeeze to get into my camera bag. The 14 inch, however, best of both worlds. I absolutely love this to take around with you everywhere. You can easily chuck it in your camera bag because the footprint size of it, it's not too much bigger than the 13 inch MacBook Pro and it easily fits in your camera bag. You don't need to worry about that at all. Now it is slightly thicker as we know. There has been a lot of talk about the size and thickness and the weight of these things. I personally don't mind that it is slightly thicker because it does allow for better performance and better cooling, but it is still so easy to carry around in your camera bag, get it out in a coffee shop and just get on with everything you need to be able to do wherever you want to do it. And talking about the size as well, the screen size is absolutely perfect, whether you're sat at home editing or working out and about in a coffee shop or sat somewhere else working with clients maybe in an office, the screen size is perfect. The 13 inch, I always found when I was editing on the 13 inch MacBook Pro that I was trying to squint because everything is so much smaller. And when you are editing on the 13 inch, the actual preview that you have of your video is a lot smaller. The 16 inch MacBook Pro, I absolutely loved editing on that because the screen was so big. But I really do think that the 14 inch is a really nice middle ground. If you do need a little bit of extra space, you can plug it into an external monitor. To use as a laptop, the 14 inch is the perfect size. And while we're talking about the display, the quality of the display is unbelievable. Easily one of the best laptop screens I have ever seen. I think it probably is the best laptop display that is out there. Now you really do need to see this screen to understand how good it is because it doesn't come across very well on camera. However, the contrast of this is genuinely unbelievable. It's got a million to one contrast ratio. So what that means is the blacks are just incredibly black. And when you see it side by side next to another display, 
the difference is night and day, it really is. And it makes editing video a much nicer experience. And even if you are using this as a consumption device, so you're watching Netflix or YouTube, the quality is just unbelievable. Now with the display, you also get the ProMotion feature, which allows for the 120 Hertz refresh rate, which looks absolutely stunning. It works really, really well. And when you are not using 120 Hertz, it will go, it will drop back down so you can save battery life. However, sometimes when you are video editing, you want to have a consistent refresh rate so you're seeing on screen exactly what you need to be seeing but this does allow you to do that you can go in and set a consistent refresh rate that suits the project you are working on so you are seeing exactly what you need to be seeing pro motion feature is amazing i absolutely love it but if you do need to just lock in a consistent refresh rate you can do that to suit your project and you're not going to have any trouble at all and you still get that incredibly high contrast which just looks incredible. Now we've all been there when you are editing video on your MacBook Pro and the fans kick in and it sounds like it's going to take off and it gets incredibly loud. This is the last thing you want when you are out and about. Maybe you're editing a video in a coffee shop in a nice quiet environment and your fans kick in and it just becomes so distracting not only to you but to other people around you. Thankfully though that is a thing of the past with these brand new MacBook Pros because not once have I heard the fans kick in on this and I've been doing some pretty heavy video editing on it. On my old MacBook Pros, the, both the 13 inch and the 16 inch, the fans would have just been going insane. This, it just runs silently. It, it barely gets warm. You can feel it getting a little bit warmer just under the keyboard, but nothing quite like what used to happen on the MacBook Pros. It is such a big improvement in that respect. And I think it's mainly down to the efficiency of the M1 Pro chip, but also, as we mentioned, the slightly thicker design, so you get improved airflow around the insides of the device, but it just makes it a much more pleasant experience because you can take your laptop somewhere, edit, and not have to worry about any fan noise or any extra heat that this is producing because it just allows you to get on with your video editing without having anything else to worry about. Now another reason that this is the perfect video editing laptop is the return of the SD card slot. Now in my opinion, this, it shouldn't have gone anywhere. I think it's probably, how long ago was it now? Five or six years ago that Apple only started putting USB-C ports onto the MacBook Pros. The SD card slot should have stayed put because it is such a widely used feature. For example, all my footage right now is being filmed through my Sony a7C onto an SD card. Most people will record their video footage. Some people will also record their audio onto an SD card slot. And the last thing you want to be doing when you're out and about is rummaging around for a dongle and then realizing you've forgotten it so you then can't plug in your SD card into your computer to download your footage. Again, that is now a thing of the past because Apple have decided to bring the SD card slot back and it just makes life so much easier because as soon as you've recorded your footage, you can take the SD card from your camera, plug it into your computer and start editing it straight away. So good. And one final reason that this cheapest MacBook Pro 14 inch is perfect for video editing is probably the reason that we were all hoping for when these were released, and it is the speed and power of it. Even though this is the base model, if you gave it to someone and didn't tell them which one it was and didn't allow them to check which one it was, they would never know that this is the base model because it is so capable and so powerful. And that is the incredible thing that Apple are doing at the moment with their brand new chips. As soon as you open it, it turns on. As soon as you open an app, it is available to use straight away. There's no waiting around for anything to load up. It's the same with Final Cut. Now, Final Cut is my choice of editing software just because it is the one that I've used for years now and it works and is optimized so well for the Mac, obviously, because it is an Apple piece of software. But it absolutely breezes through footage and all of my projects with absolutely no trouble at all and no dropped frames whatsoever. You can scrub through it with ease. And for example, this that I'm showing right now is 4K footage filmed in XAVC-S 4K on my Sony a7C. So it is fairly compressed files and it just absolutely cruises through it. It doesn't have any trouble at all. The 
The project's got two color grades on it, one conversion lot and one lot grade, and it has text and animations as well, and it just absolutely flies through it. I have no trouble with it whatsoever, and it just backs up that this base MacBook Pro 14 inch is more than powerful enough for what most people need it for. Now, if you are after one of the brand new MacBook Pros and not sure which one to go for, not sure whether to go for the M1 Pro chip or the M1 Max chip, I personally would recommend the base MacBook Pro 14 inch because I think that is more than powerful enough for what the vast majority of people are doing. I've put this through some heavy video editing and I've not had any trouble with it. I've not heard the fans. It's not stuttered or lagged once. It is an absolute dream to edit video on. Where I would recommend upgrading to the M1 Max chip is if you are doing a lot of 8K video editing, but not so many people are doing that at the moment. It might become more prominent in a few years down the line. We will wait and see but if you are doing 8k video I will probably recommend the M1 Max chip and also if you are doing a lot of 3d graphics rendering I will probably go with the M1 Max chip over the M1 Pro but for anything else go with the M1 Pro save yourself a little bit of money than going for the M1 Max chip because this is genuinely incredible I and I'm not just saying this as a bit of an Apple fanboy. If you watch a lot of my videos, you will know that I really, really do like using my Apple gear, but this, I love it. I really, really love it. It is my favorite Apple product in a lot of years. It is sturdy, it feels well built. I love the extra thickness. I love that it's got little engravings with the MacBook Pro on it now. It looks smart, I love the design. I love that it's got ports back, I love the speed of it. Basically, I just like it a lot. I'm gonna stop going on about how much I like it now because I like it a lot. I really do. So this MacBook Pro is gonna last me, hopefully, a lot of years and I'm not gonna need to upgrade it for a very, very long time. It is worth every single penny. So hopefully that helps you out if you are looking to buy one of the brand new MacBook Pros and if you do decide to get one I hope you enjoy using it as much as I do mine. That is it for this video. Don't forget to click that little subscribe button just down below there. Go and check out my other video on the MacBook Pro if you would like to and I shall see you all very soon in another video. Hair. Uh.